All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another Q and A for The Walking Dead season seven. In this one, we're going to start with talking about the news from uh, NBC, and it was from Gail and her too that The Walking Dead almost became a zombie television series crime drama. Also, I got a kind of a Walking Dead haul. I got The Walking Dead Season 6 on DVD. Finally, man, finally. So I'm still going through it. We'll do a review for it once I, you know, go through the whole thing and check all the features and everything. I've just briefly gone through the deleted scenes in that. And it has, like, the first half deleted scenes. So we'll get more into, uh, into discussing what's on and everything once I go through every disc and I get to see everything and get to see all the features. And I'll let you guys know, you know, whether or not I think it's worth, you know, fully uh, making the purchase for the whole season. I mean, it's... It's an amazing season anyway. So as a collector for me, you know, I'm going to have it. I have every season anyway. It's a no-brainer. But uh, for some of you guys who might be on the fence, uh, heads up, uh, review will be coming this week for that. Then I got a new Daryl uh, poster type uh, deal right here. Uh, sweet, man. So it's a, it's a pretty cool. Killing it. Love it. Very cool. So I think it's an upgrade to the other one. It's a, it's kind of like a poster, but it's like, uh, it's like harder, you know, and it's, uh, it's uh, thicker and everything. So it's pretty cool. It's like an art print, I suppose, or something like that. Uh, really cool. So yeah, I'll put the link in the description to uh, slashfilm.com for you guys. NBC wanted The Walking Dead to be a procedural crime drama, or maybe even drop the zombies altogether. So I briefly touched on this in the Fear of the Walking Dead Q&A, but I decided, you know what, I'll just I'll do a Walking Dead solo uh, Q&A for this one because and include it in this one, because um, a lot of people, they want to separate Walking Dead and Fear. Like a lot of people, I've gotten a lot of messages, Trev, can you split the Q&As? Because I like watching The Walking Dead, but I don't like hearing the ones about uh, fear. I don't like watching the ones about fear of The Walking Dead because either I'm not caught up, I don't care about it, or, or what have you. So uh, I'll try and split it up a little bit more. But of course, because they're both Walking Dead, they're going to splash into each other. They're going to rub off on each other, and there's going to be uh, some you know crossover for the Q and A's and stuff. But uh, yeah, the the link will be from Slash Film for the NBC News thing. Um, oh my God, how disastrous! This just it makes me sick. It makes me want to absolutely puke my guts out um it's just gross man the idea that nbc almost ruined the walking dead so it says according to executive producer gail ann hurd nbc was initially intrigued by frank darabont's script for the show but wondered if he might make it a zombie crime drama instead or even just get rid of the whole zombie angle altogether <laughs> it's like what <laughs> what Okay, so you want to do, this is why I hate networks like NBC and some of the other mainstream ones. Because it's like, they try to take everything that's artistic and they want to smash it into a box and, you know, cram it all in, into something that procedurally fits with their 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 model. They want it to conform to their model. They don't want to do a series that, okay, they're going to have to put a lot of effort into. Maybe they're going to have to invest more into it. The budget's going to be higher. They're going to have to build environments. They're going to have to have, you know, a Greg Nicotero and thousands of zombies on set. They want to smash it into this, this box that fits with everything else they're doing, like a lot of their other, you know, procedural crime drama shows, and just normalize it. And it makes me sick. This is why networks like NBC have very few high quality shows, I want to say, drama type uh, series that really anybody can get into because this procedural crap, I mean, it's not bad. Like, okay, and I don't want to, I don't want to totally bash on the stuff that's out there. Some of it's good. Like some of it's fine. Uh, for example, this, this whole concept to me sounds like iZombie is really what it is. The CW's iZombie. And I'm not saying iZombie is unwatchable. It's watchable, but it's not in the same league or territory as The Walking Dead. It's not even something you can really take seriously. Like, you know, you get with eye zombie, it turns into a zombie, it's kind of like superpowers and stuff. Can you imagine if, uh, you know, Darabont would have sold out? So, see, we, we still have to thank Darabont a lot for The Walking Dead that we ended up actually getting. Because can you imagine if he would have sold out to NBC and done it as a procedural or, or try to do it as, as like a crime series? 
<laughs> like Rick and Shane are detectives and they got to investigate the most recent zombie killing and, and minor zombie outbreak where one person becomes a zombie or maybe not even at all. Maybe it's just The Walking Dead and you have Rick and Shane and you have the cheating and stuff like that. But maybe you don't have zombies at all. Huh? Do you think that's a good idea? Do you think we should do that? What do you think? Huh? Disgusting. Absolutely gross. So let's thank... Whoever the hell, thank God, whatever you believe in, <laughs> you know, that that didn't, that didn't happen. Thank Frank, thank uh, Kirkman, thank whoever that that didn't happen and we actually have, uh, you know, and really they should take more risks like this and do more shows where they have to put some gumption into it. They got to put some, some, some backing behind it to make something special. Like Game of Thrones season six, the budget was $100 million. HBO is putting their money where their mouth is. They're saying, we want to create something amazing. Let's put 100 mil into it and create something amazing. You're not going to see a 100 mil budget for a crime drama. <laughs> anyway, absolutely nasty. You guys can write your comments below on how disgusted you are with that. Or if some of you think it might actually have been a good idea. <sighs> Please, actually, if you know what, if you if, just keep your, I can't say keep your opinion to yourself if you think that. No, you can still write it, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> continue with the Q and A's. Um, George M. Pilicapidus says, uh, "Hey Trev, you are a cool guy. Your videos are awesome. Well, well, thanks, George. I appreciate that. I don't add these guys. I don't add these, by the way. Maybe I should take them out. Um, Trev, do you believe Dwight is going to be killed by Daryl in The Walking Dead season seven? So, uh, yeah, I've kind of given my thoughts on it a couple times now in the Q and A's and stuff like that, and in the Death Predictions video. I do think they both can't coexist. So I do think one of them's got to be killed off. I don't know if it's going to be season seven because we're still getting to know Dwight. They've got a lot of backstory and stuff to set up." For that but maybe season eight uh you know something like that uh would be would make sense uh for one or the other so we'll see how it goes josh giles says q a trev how do you how would you like to see the beginning of season seven start what would you like to see for the opening scene so obviously i think that's an easy easy question to answer someone's got to get their brain smashed in to start <laughs> just to set the pace set it up right it should make it one of the best premieres ever uh that's one thing it's like with the season finale it sucks that they pushed it through to the next season but at the same time, they want to have a big premiere too. And if you look at Terminus and uh, you know the Hunters and that, they pushed that through to the next season, and it actually worked out great. And I don't think anybody was pissed off. And it was kind of a cliffhanger too, them being caught in the train cart. It just wasn't as uh, painful as this one because we knew someone was going to get smashed, and uh, now we have to wait all summer to find out who. Julio Bernal asked some good questions. He says, Trev, uh, do you think they should have uh, paid everyone to stay on set just to keep the suspense higher for filming? So absolutely, Julio, definitely no question about it. They should have kept everybody on set so that spoilers couldn't really be a thing, you know. Um, and I don't know how much that would cost, but, uh, you know, for me, it's like, I think it'd kind of be worth it. Because it, it'd kind of be cool if, like, there was totally no idea, no one had any idea, really, of, of who it was or anything, even up to this point. That would be cool. Um Fun Somley says, okay, so he's got number one, he thinks it's uh, something to fear. Number two, saviors at the sanctuary. So this is what he thinks is going to happen in, in the episodes. So I agree with that. I'd love to see the premiere name, something to fear for uh, season seven, episode one. Number two, saviors at the sanctuary. So maybe getting a little bit of their backstory. Uh, number three, he says the kingdom. Number four, back to Alexandria. End of the episode uh, begins uh, or began, uh, come, the dead come, uh, begins, uh, comes knocking. Five, um, first offering, spent, uh, somebody maybe, maybe uh, killed, uh, possibly killed off, we'll see. Uh, six, Tara and Heath, and then and seven, and eight, I'm not sure. So maybe some kind of mid-season finale battle between uh, the uh, the Saviors and, uh, you know, Rick and the gang or something like that. Well, we'll have to see what they add in, but it does look like they might add in another, um, another group, so we'll see how that goes. So it should be good. Um, Next one's from DMM. So, so I like your uh, I like your breakdowns on something. I think it might be. I'm, I think I think that might be good. I think that might be what we see. Something like that. DNM Productions. Hey, Trav Q and A. Which weapon would you use? Uh, Negan's Lucille or Michonne's Katana? And uh, we'll do one more after this one uh, because both are awesome. Thanks. So for DNM, uh, that's tough. That's a tough question to answer. If you're talking like in terms of like real life, what would you prefer to have? Would you prefer to have a katana or a baseball bat wrapped with barbed wire? Um, I probably 
probably go with a katana in terms of the uh, pra practicality of it and uh, its ability to to kill zombies. I think, I mean, a bat would be good too because you could just bash their heads in, right, and just cave in their skulls uh, as they probably would become more uh, weaker with, of course, you know, being in the zombie apocalypse, not getting out of nutrients, that kind of stuff. You could crack some skulls pretty easily with that. But I do think that Michonne's katana would allow you to go through a lot of zombies more quickly than a bat, like a, a you know, a weighted down, a weighted katana. You could go through and you could cut through and like because because you've got a you know uh, it, of course it being sharp and everything, I think you'd be able to go through zombies faster with a katana than you could with a with a, a Louisville Slugger or a nice baseball bat. Uh, either one, but in in terms of as a fan, <laughs> you know, like if I was in the Walking Dead world, then you got to go with Lucille. I think as a fan, but uh, in terms of practicality, I think a katana uh, would probably be more useful than a bat. I'm just saying, uh, Josh. Giles says, hey, Trev, uh, what is the rarest collectible you have? So the very rarest one I have, um, geez, man, that, that's pretty tough to say. I've got some old Marvel Legends, like uh, the Foom uh, Build-A-Figure that's pretty rare, Ares Build-A-Figure, that's pretty rare. Um, at this point, I've got some early Marvel Legends stuff, like the Brown Pants Cable, the first version, that's pretty rare, on card. Um, but out of my Walking Dead stuff, I've got most of Series 1 uh, of the action figures, the very first series, and I think the rarest one I have is my custom Shane, because you can't even get the parts to build that anymore. Those are all been sold out for so long. So the Shane custom, there's a lot of Rick customs out there, and some of the others are, are easier to come by but the Shane one I think would go for quite a bit on eBay because it's so like you can't you can't make it anymore you had to buy the body when it first came out there was only so many made and at this point who knows where they are and they don't really show up for sale very often so probably the uh, Shane is probably the rarest Walking Dead thing I have and I don't know what it would go for probably around 300 something like that 250 something like that maybe 200 um Last one will be from Mike D. He says, when the series eventually ends, do you believe the writers will give The Walking Dead the ending uh, that it uh, deserves and will fulfill the fans' satisfaction? I think so, personally, uh, when you consider that Kirkman at one time was uh, considering ending the series with Alexandria, kind of as them having a happy ending and finding a home. Um, I'm really happy he didn't. I'm happy he went on with it. And uh, I think at this point, we got to be pretty satisfied with The Walking Dead as a series after six seasons. It's been an incredible six seasons. Even right now, it's going to be the series for me to beat. I don't know if there's going to be another series on TV in the next 10 or 20 years that I will like as much as Walking Dead. Probably not. You know, I mean, it's just my favorite ever. And and even if it ends at season 10 or season 9, because we know it's at least got three seasons left, um, then I'll still be happy with it and I'll still be satisfied with it. But the longer it goes, the better. And if it can get if it can get to 15 seasons. I'll be even happy with that and uh, satisfied when they end it at that point. But in terms of, like, what, what should they do, you know, I think fans will be satisfied either way. If they go with the happy ending, which Kirkman originally had planned, sounds like maybe he might stick with that. We'll see. Then people will be satisfied with that, I think. And then if you have, like, maybe an ending with the death of Rick or something and we see the end of his story, uh, you know, it, it, might be a, it might be a good idea to do it that way where he can rest because he's, uh, you know, he's accomplished enough and done enough in his life that he's, like, the best zombie apocalypse character ever, which he pretty much always already is and that'll be it for today's q a guys you can write your comments below on what you think especially when it comes to the first uh, first part and uh, maybe what you want to see for the end of the walking dead so write in the comments below uh this kind of ending is what i'd like to see and after this many seasons for the tv series if you guys like this video please don't forget to thumb it up below please share at the bottom left share through to facebook and of course you can favor it at the bottom if you're new uh subscribe subscribe bottom left that's it for this video guys we'll see you again soon probably tomorrow for another as always is trev and i'm saying peace later guys see ya